First question, what is advanced manufacturing and how is it different from manufacturing in general? Anyone can um, respond, not everybody has to, but uh, feel free. Uh, advanced manufacturing uh, really is uh, a term coined for, for modern, really modern manufacturing. Most manufacturing today is advanced manufacturing. And uh, how does it differ? Well, if you have your image of manufacturing and how things were made 40 or 50 years ago, uh, there was, there was um, a lot of machinery involved. There's, there's a lot of people that were involved to run the machines. And operations and so on were fairly simple. Each operation involved the person interacting with the machine, uh, design and development. Uh, products were uh, not quite as complex as they are today. Uh, if you think about the telephone, uh, the old rotary phone of years ago and, and the uh, small computer you're holding your hands today, uh, manufacturing is, has really had to follow that path. Uh, you know, today, uh, manufacturing really has taken, taken advantage of many of those emerging technologies, uh, computer-controlled machines and, and uh, assembly equipment dominate the, uh, the workplace, um, even taking advantage of... Uh, Integrating uh, our cell phones, many uh, process engineers and development engineers can can uh, interface with the machinery through their smartphone at home. So the advance of technology, along with all of the standard manufacturing processes, has really been a big part of it. And uh, it's it's also the uh, process of the machines. I mentioned there was there was many machines that were involved. Each machine may have one part of the process today. Most machines could be considered a hybrid machine. Most process could be uh, involved with hybrid, where all of the mechanized operations now, any piece can do what four pieces used to do before. We've just continually integrated this automation uh, into our processes so that um, people can be more efficient. This was never done to remove people from the, from the, uh, the landscape of manufacturing, but to make us more competitive Manufacturers have, have taken advantage of every technology they can today. Uh, even even the interaction between uh, people and machinery has changed. Before there was a much uh, uh, labor-intensive operations, a lot of people doing a lot of work. Now when we interact with machinery and, and processes, we may interact with robots who do that hand operation or that, sim that, that single operation each day or each part. Uh, right up through to engineering and development. Uh, before, there was a lot of uh, processes and steps where we would de design and develop uh, parts, uh, machines, equipment, it doesn't matter. The, the design process might involve a lot of hand steps. Uh, now today, with all the computer integration, is, is uh, a designer may sit in, his, in their office and design and develop something and have direct contact right to the equipment that's going to make it. So there's, this, there's been this integration of all of today's technology into manufacturing, and it's really advanced it into this high-tech world where everything we do is, is tied to computer operation, to uh, all the technology that's available today. And that's what we call advanced manufacturing, and it really dominates the, uh, the scene of manufacturing on all levels. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, in, in Dave's uh, introduction uh, for GW Lisk, talked about being uh, uh, making custom components for many industries. Uh, Optimax is the same thing. We do custom components. The older manufacturing was 
we're going to make a whole bunch of these things, put them in inventory, and eventually we'll sell them. Uh, nobody does that anymore. It's, uh, or if they do, they're not going to last very long. Uh, now what we have is a situation that we refer to as lean manufacturing. Probably a lot of you are familiar with that. Uh, with the lean manufacturing, basically we are making just what the customer has ordered. Uh, at Optimax, we're very much a job shop. We are making custom optical components that we're, we may never make again. Uh, so we need to be very agile in how, how easily we can go from making one, one component to another. And our technicians, an example, a, a, a strong example of that, uh, we, we started to move into lean manufacturing in 2004 and before that we would have technicians that could have been working with us for eight or nine or ten years and only run one piece of machinery and only be familiar with one part of the the process uh, for fabricating an optic um, now our technicians are able to most of our technicians are able to take apart from beginning to end and we went to a cellular uh, workflow so the, the work is all there. The, the machines that are needed to make an optic are all put together in a close proximity, and one operator can run the entire cell and take parts from start to finish. Um, so that's that's an advanced manufacturing. You know, that to me, that's that's the difference between old manufacturing and advanced manufacturing. And it doesn't really matter what the what the parts are. All the parts that are being made, most of the parts are being made. Um, either at LISC or, or Optimax or any of the other precision machine shops around um, are, are very, very good. <laughs> the, the demands for quality are extremely high, and it doesn't matter whether, you know, we, we just happen to work in glass uh, and brittle materials, but it's no di our tolerances and things like that aren't a lot different from, from what the uh, machine shops like, uh, like LISC would be. So... I think one of the things I'm seeing along exactly what these gentlemen are saying is the flexibility is one of the key things. Coming through an automotive plant, you know, everything was very dedicated tooling, dedicated machinery, and to make a change was a huge thing to do. Now we're working, like Jim said, a lot of customization. Instead of punching out 20,000 parts, they may have to make a change in route. So the type of technology with computerization and the way we can change things on the fly has become critical. But in order to do that, you need a workforce that can also change on the fly and have to wear a lot more hats than we used to have to wear. So I said, often time I'll see guys that are out running machines, they'll run a machine to very close spec, then it's going to be their responsibility to take and do the first run on that in the quality area. So they're using quality equipment. They may have to input data to do an SPC analysis on it. You know, all that in the past was dedicated to, us, to different people. Now we're seeing more and more people wearing a lot of these hats. So to me, that's one of the biggest things I've seen is what I would consider advanced is the flexibility and the ability for the equipment today to change rapidly. I was a tool and die maker. When you create a die, it's a very fixed piece of equipment. You can only make a certain part. So if you want to do something as simple as move a hole and a part, you have to rebuild the die or change the die. Very intensive. Now a lot of that's being done on automated and computerized of stamping equipment, and they can do a change literally on the fly by typing in some different things into the computer. So the skill levels have changed, and that's what I think when I think of advanced manufacturing. It's the, it's the utilization of technology to make us more flexible and to adapt quickly to you know, really customer needs. I think what I would like to say is, as you can uh, witness, there is no succinct, clear-cut definition of advanced manufacturing. Some people would argue that it is a relative term. For hunter-gatherer, when they saw the agriculture, that was advanced manufacturing. For uh, someone who is fashioning tools out of stone, someone else who was just throwing stones at each other would think of that as advanced manufacturing. So what is different? Well, uh, in a way, what is different is that finally the Moore's Law that we have heard about doubling of computation power uh, every uh, 18 months or so, that has caught up with the rest of the manufacturing. So the cost of many of the tools, such as, say, machine vision, um, precision motion control, robotics, used to be prohibitive for a lot of small businesses, which has now become uh, different. Uh, the tools themselves are less expensive, as well as the software behind that, which used to take graduate researchers 
is no longer uh, requiring that level of training and skill because software is highly modularized. So we can teach this to people at all levels within organization. Um, in a way, I would say that it is a adaptable choreography of skilled people and precision machines integrated with information systems for complex automation and continuous quality control throughout the manufacturing process, not just deciding pass-fail at the end of the process. Um, so it is in response to rapidly changing market needs through continuous learning, not just on part of the people involved, but team learning as well as learning as a whole system. So we have machine learning combined with human learning, and it's an ongoing process. So the advanced technology or advanced manufacturing of today uh, is different than what it was five years ago, 10 years ago, and it will be different next year. But it's a process which requires uh, continuous learning, uh, communication skill on the part of uh, line worker all the way throughout the whole organization. All right, thank you. Second question, are manufacturing companies really having trouble filling job openings during a period of high unemployment? And if so, why? I'll take a start on that. I happen to see this uh, article, I get a, a newsletter from the uh, NTMA, um, Tooling and Machining Association, and this was from the Dayton Daily News on June 6th. Uh, 101 co companies which responded to a survey uh, in Dayton uh, had 697 job openings. Uh, in the 14 county Dayton region, this is Dayton, Ohio, Manufacturers Association uh, member region, uh, they believe there's 7,000 openings. Uh, but there's total skills mismatch. Uh, operate CNC machines, workers need to be able to perform uh, math calculations and you know, program, be able to program the machine. Good math, good common sense. And, uh, and there's also another article that was from late May uh, that said the man, Manpower uh, had done a, 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 an international survey and found that 34% of employers around the world report trouble filling jobs because of the lack of available talent. It's not that these people weren't good at what they did before, um, but it's just that it, it, if I take this to the context of Optimax, we interview people every day. Uh, we've got some, we've hired in, in 2011, we're, we're not a large company, we're at about 175 right now. Um, in, in, 19, or in 2011, we hired 38 people. So far in 2012, we've hired 19 people, and we're probably going to hire at least 40 people for this year. Um, we, to do that, we'll probably interview 400 people uh, to get to the, the skills and the, the mindset and the, the ability to, and, and the energy to learn what we need people to learn. I think uh, what Sam just said about uh, a lifelong learning process, the technology is changing so quickly in all these industries that if, if you're not committed to lifelong learning, it's, it, you're going to get left behind. It's, it's just not, it's not possible to compete. Um, you know, and, and as far as, so that's, to, to me, that is the thing. We're looking for people who are able to, as I said before, our technicians are, are well-versed across a pretty broad range of, of uh, process techniques, and uh, we're, we're compared to the old, the old model where uh, they were w really a master of one tech, of one uh, part of the process. So that's that's part of it, I think. Where do people go to get that? Um, uh, we'll take questions. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you want to if you want to we'll, if you want to ask questions, uh, please write them down. We'll take those at the second hour of our our uh, career uh, panel discussion. So I think uh, I might add yeah. one, one other thing I think uh, that might be part of our problem is uh, a little bit of an image uh, problem. People aren't, young folks aren't entering uh, the field of manufacturing. Uh, and, and many people I think that maybe in a transfer situation aren't interested to, or don't look at it. I think the image of manufacturing, of, of uh, making stuff, of, of the factory, uh, we suffer from an image problem. People in their minds still imagine 
that it's these older machines that were great big gear driven machines and there's smoke coming out one end in parts and, and it's a loud hot place with heavy lifting um, and today's manufacturing facilities look nothing like that They're, the heavy lifting is gone uh, if there's something big and heavy to be lifted, we've probably got some sort of robot or something that's going to do that hard work. <laughs> that 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 daily thing of uh, the image of putting a screw A into uh, slot B all day long um, is probably done by some sort of automated process, and that person now just tends maybe three or four of those processes. So uh, our image is, is hurting, and, and uh, there, there may be a, many... Uh, a whole other workshop just on why our image and, and why that is what it is, but I think an, an image problem is, is part of it. People don't see what uh, manufacturing is, and, and it maybe tends it as well. So that's part of why, I guess, why we spend so much time at things like this and out uh, reaching out to people to show them what manufacturing looks like today. And I can talk about the uh, number of companies that we have right now, and the, there's a bunch of key skill sets that we use and monitor uh, to leverage ourselves into clients that we can't get into. Um, for example, if we're trying to get into GW Lisk and we're talking with the HR lady and she's using other agencies and she's like, no, we don't need you, we don't need you. All I have to say is, hey, I got a couple senior level mill people. And I pause. Next thing out of her, why don't you come in on Friday? Okay, then I go in there and say, what about a couple senior level lathe people? Okay, I know Dave's got openings over there at those positions. Before we even talk, I know he could use a couple senior level people on his second shift, on his third shift, for high level mill and lathe people. So for me, those are key areas that we have an overabundance of openings right now. I don't have the people. And so we go on a little bit different. If Dave doesn't want to do business with us and his HR person pushes us off, guess where there's some lathe and mill people for me to go? Over at Dave's place. But those are the people that we're attacking right now because they have a skill set that no one is getting taught on because 90% of uh, high school kids are not going into these programs. They're going into college to be an engineer because, or an accountant because that's what mom and dad said they should do. And the problem with that is this specialized skill set is getting so more advanced. This tooling is getting so uh, high level. If you want to make 8 to $10 an hour, Japan's going to take all those jobs. These senior level positions on how to run these machines, how to run, the, run these blueprints. And these machines are giant computers. And the salary behind this is going up and up. The problem with the panel up here is we can't find enough people that we can get in who want to be trained on this. The openings are there. I mean, I've got 20-something openings for mill operators, 20-something for lathe and press break, a bunch of openings. We just don't have the people anymore who can do that. And that's what I would say there is an overabundance of jobs within these categories of advanced manufacturing. The other factor seems to be that educational institutions and the programs are falling behind with respect to what is actually needed in the workplace. Uh, with all the use of technology, which is also network, you have combination of software, hardware, and other skill set that is needed. Um, we are not able to fulfill the demand for that. If you look at the pipeline for engineering, only about one quarter or 20 percent of people actually graduate with engineering degree after six years of college education. And often because they are being taught things which were relevant and important for one time are probably no longer as critical today because software and hardware is making some of the things um, either very different than what they are learning. And so what is needed is new training, such as what we provide at the Finger Lakes Community College through our instrumentation and control technology program, which is sort of a liberal arts program for technologists because a graduate is able to work in a variety of industries and in, within given industry in a variety of roles and is able to work with different teams, work with different machines. And that is not something the educational system has caught up with. I mean, the surveys of, uh, there was a big survey by Rutgers University, out of 600 or so people surveyed the bachelor's degree, only half of them are doing jobs which require a bachelor's degree. 
and among the ones which did require bachelor's degree, only about half of them are actually doing job related to their bachelor's degree. So uh, that, that they will, the education system has to wake up and it is high time that it does so. And through uh, what MCC and us at Finger Lakes, what we are doing is to make a dent in that problem. And uh, we need basically help uh, with respect to publicizing this for not just the high school population as well as uh, other uh, older uh, individuals who have um, appetite for learning new things and wanting to work in this kind of dynamic environment. And that is not something that is coming through. Uh, perhaps it is being talked about in the media, but it is not hitting home as much as it ought to. The only thing, last thing, I just want to just add to that real quickly, and it kind of goes along with what Dave was saying, is I think it's a lack of awareness. We've come from a town of huge manufacturing, the Kodak, Xerox, Bausch & Lomb, the Delco plants, and GM. And because they've downsized, I think people are under the pressure that manufacturing is going away, you know, that these jobs don't exist. I talk to a lot of school counselors. I talk to a lot of people, and they'll go, well, there is no manufacturing left in Rochester. You know why? Because it's driven by smaller companies like Optimax, um, 100, 200 people companies or less that don't get the press. And yet these folks are hiring two, three, four, five people. Um, I did a, a quick survey in, in, the, in the Finger Lakes region. There was over 700 companies involved in advanced manufacturing. Most of them you drive by every day, you see a sign on the front, have no idea that these guys are in there doing aerospace, that they're making lenses that are getting shot up to Mars. I mean, it's, it's kind of off the grid. All we see is the bad side of it. Oh, we get somebody else going bankrupt, or letting somebody go. You're not hearing of all these jobs that are booming out there. So it does exist, but it's a lack of awareness by the general population, to be honest with you, that, that it's really, it is thriving in, in Rochester.